from the rising of the sun until the going down of the same. Hallelujah. And we got to praise him while we can. Because we don't know what the rest of the day holds. We used to say we don't know what tomorrow holds. We can't say that anymore. We don't know what the rest of the day holds. Amen? Amen. And so we ought to give God what he deserves, and that is our praise. Amen. You know, when you think about it, what else do we have to give God? Let me just think about that for a minute. You can't give him more money. The cattle on a thousand hills are his. The silver and the gold is his. You can't give him any more intellect because he's all-knowing. He's omniscient. You can't lend him your power because he's got all power. He's omnipotent. You can't go somewhere and tell him about it because he's everywhere at the same time. So when we think about it, we really don't have a whole bunch to give God, but, but we have our praise. And that's why I love a noisy crowd, because, because a noisy crowd lets me know that somebody understands that God is good. And that he keeps on blessing us over and over and over again. And so since I don't have much, at least I have my praise. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody said, ain't no party like a Holy Ghost party. Hallelujah. <laughs> now, we were at a pretty good party last night. As we celebrated uh, Kim Davenport's 50th birthday. Amen. And if you want to know what leadership looks like, Look it up in the dictionary and you'll probably see her face next to it. Amen. And so we, we, we told her a few things that are true to her. But this morning, we get to come and let the Lord know how great he is and how marvelous he is and how wonderful he is. Amen. And I, I love the Lord. I, I love the Lord. I love the Lord. And I love him because he first loved me. You know, and when I was unlovable, he loved me. And so, yeah, I've come to, to give him praise. Amen. We're thankful to be here on this morning. Praise God. I went home last night after I did the line dance and I did whatever the little bit I was going to do and I went on home because I knew I was going to have to stand uh, in John's shoes and bring a message. And I don't believe in just getting up and just saying anything. Hey Amen. I respect God too much for that. And he deserves the very best that we can offer. Amen. And so I went home and I started contemplating uh, the message on today. And the message today 
is a message entitled, Fight the Good Fight of Faith and Never Give Up. Say that with me. Fight the good fight of faith and never give up. It's taken out of Mark. At least that's going to be our starting point. You all know I've been in Acts, um, and we're going to Acts, but we're going to start in Mark. Amen. The 14th chapter. Just two verses there, verses 51 and 52. I have preached this text from a different message, amen, but for today's message, it was the good, a good springboard, amen, into the truths that God wants me to share with you on today, amen. Now, a certain young man followed him, having a linen cloth thrown around his naked body. And the young men laid hold of him, and he left the linen cloth and fled from them naked. Now a certain young man followed him, having a linen cloth thrown around his naked body. And the young men laid hold of him, and he left the linen cloth and fled from them naked. The word of God for the people of God, praise be to our God. Fight the good fight of faith, you may be seated, and never give up. There is a veiled reference, possibly, to John Mark in Mark 14, 51 and 52. In this passage, a young man, obviously in bed, and Jesus, the Nazarene, has been accosted. He has been arrested. And the mob crowd who arrested Jesus must have been making a lot of noise. As they pass this man's place, the noise woke him up. One of the, the differences between the country and the city is that in the country, it's so quiet until you can hear the crickets. Amen. A little bit too quiet for me. But I grew up in the city Amen, where you can hear almost anything at any time. Amen. It's noisy. Amen. And so during Jesus' arrest, and the noise was so great, this young man did not have time to get dressed. And so what he did, he, he took his cloth off of his bed, wrapped himself up in it, and went to the door to see what was going on. Apparently, he got too close to the entourage. The Bible says that evidently they made a, a, a reach for him, trying to arrest him too, and they caught the linen cloth and he made a naked dash into the night. I used to call this the naked runner. Amen. Those are the only two verses about this particular event. And it is only recorded in the Gospel of Mark. It leads many to believe that the young man who makes this naked dash into the night must have been John Mark himself. Praise God. So who was John Mark? 
He was a believer in the early church, and he is mentioned directly only out of the book of Acts. John Mark is the first mentioned as the son of a woman named Mary, whose house was being used as a place for believers to gather and pray. You'll find that in Acts 12, verse 12. It says, when this uh, had dawned on him, he went to the house of Mary, the mother of John, also called Mark, where many people had gathered and were praying. At least he was in a good place. How many of you all know that if you're in a good place, possibly good things could fall to you? Amen. We didn't get our start necessarily because we were so good, but sometimes we found ourselves in good places. Amen. Like some of you all were uh, drugged to church. Amen. You didn't go on your own volition because if they had taken a vote, you probably would have stayed at Bedside Baptist. Amen. And, 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 and clung to those uh, linen cloths a little bit tighter. But you were made to get up and go to worship. And maybe the reason why you're here today is because of the seeds that were planted when you were drugged to a good place. Amen. Sometimes we end up in good places and sometimes good things happen to us, not because we made good choices, but we found ourselves in good places. Amen. So they were having prayer meeting at his mother's house. This is John Mark. Amen. And the Bible said that many gathered to pray. Now much prayer, much power. Little prayer, little power, no prayer, no power. The reason why so many people are powerless is because they do not have a consistent prayer life. Amen. You've got to check in with heaven. You've got to ask God what he wants of you. Amen. If you want to stay connected. Amen. Later, Mark is mentioned as a companion of Barnabas and Paul during their missionary journey. Amen. They took this guy named John Mark. In Acts 12, 25, we're told that, that when they went out on their mission, John Mark was one of these people who went with them. Amen. Again, he finds himself in good company. Because the Bible says that the Holy Spirit had separated Paul and Barnabas for the task of spreading the gospel, amen, beyond Jerusalem. And John Mark was in the company. Amen. But sometimes this journey that we're on is not easy. Amen. Um, when you try to do the very best that you can, when you try to live right, there are so many detractors in the world today. And some folk who smile in your face, they're not really happy because of the walk that you're taking. That's why you got to be careful because Smiling faces tell lies. Oh, y'all gonna hang with me just for a little while, will you? So you gotta be careful. Everybody's not in your corner. Everybody's not in your favor. And sometimes the people who trip you up the fastest are the people who are close to you. Amen. And so the record is that while they were on their first missionary journey, they went out and, and you know, things were good for a little while, but, but then they went to places where it didn't look like the message was getting through. 
They went to places where they met hostility, persecution. You know, if you come to worship, don't think everybody going to be happy to see you. Amen. And don't look at everybody because you might think that they looking at you for some negative reason when they just might have indigestion. <laughs> Amen. You know, we, we have a tendency to misread messages. Amen. Everybody's not mad with you. Everybody's not coming to see what you're doing and find about your business. Amen. Some of us got a life. Amen. Praise God. But every, evidently things got heated and John Mark decided to go home. And he left them on that missionary journey. Now, it gives credence to what we... Because again, I, when Jesus was arrested, this guy made a mad dash going in the opposite direction of Jesus. Now that they're on this missionary journey and the gospel is going forward, they meet persecution and he reverts back to what he's used to doing. He ran back home. I believe there are some contemporary runners today. Amen. As long as the sun is shining, as long as things are, are well with some people, you know, they may come to church. I said may. They may come to church. But as soon as adversarial winds start to blow, as soon as things start to go south, they stop coming. And you ask them, what's the problem? You say, well, you know, it's hard. Well, I believe that when things get hard, the best place to be is where God is. <laughs> Amen. If, if you get a bad report from the doctor, you ought to come to the greatest doctor that we know. Dr. Jesus is able to do everything but fail. But when you're used to running, you'll revert back to what you're used to. Amen. So you got to watch habits because you can become habitual in your habits. Oh, my goodness. And so when Paul and Barnabas came back home, they got the idea that they might need to go back out and encourage the people who they had seen on their first missionary journey. Barnabas said, you know, that's a good idea. He said, you know what, let's... Let's take John Mark with us. And Paul said, no, he can't go. And if Paul were here today, he would tell you that at that moment and in that time, he would say, I don't deal with quitters. Amen. Uh, you know, and, and, and to be honest with you, as a pastor, I have a problem with quitters. You know, I, you know people, people you, you, you think you can depend on, and sometimes when you need them the most, you can't find them. I think you ought to be consistent. Amen. If you're for something, be for it. Amen. Be all in. And especially as it relates to Christianity because Jesus was all in for you. And since he was all in for you, you ought to be all in for him. Hallelujah. People used to tell me, and, and you know, we don't have afternoon services much anymore, and people want to know why. It's because folks don't show up. 
Amen. You can't hardly get them to morning worship, and then when you have an afternoon service, you know, people, people tell you, well, you know, I'll be there in spirit. <laughs> have you ever counted spirits? That feels like a spirit. <laughs> you invite somebody to your house, you ought to be there. Amen. 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 And if only, and, and people misquote this passage so often, where two or three are gathered, the Lord is in the midst. That ain't what that says. It says where two or three are gathered in my name, now, when you use the Lord's name, you also got to take his way, his will, and his word. Hallelujah. You just can't have two or three people. You may have two or three heathens together. <laughs> Amen. Y'all don't mind if I preach this a little bit. I, I'll, I'll soon be finished. Amen. And so Paul said, no. He can't go. And you know, I'm thankful that the story doesn't end with Paul telling Barnabas that John Mark can't go, even though that was his MO, even though he, he was used to running. Amen? Um, I've been with, uh, with Henry. We know somebody who every time we see them, they quote this thing called don't quit. It says when things go wrong, as they sometimes will, when the road you're trudging seems all uphill, when the funds are low and the debts are high, and you wanna smile but you have to sigh, when care is pressing you down a bit, rest if you must, but just don't quit. Life is strange with its twists and turns, as every one of us sometimes learns, and many a fellow turns about when he might have won had he stuck it out. Don't give up, though the pace seems slow. You may succeed with another blow. Often the goal is nearer than it seems to a faint and faltering man. Often the struggler has given up when he might have captured the victor's cup. And he learned too late when the night came down, how close he was. Oh my goodness. To the golden crown. Success is failure turns inside out. The silver tint in the clouds of doubt. And you never can tell how close you are. It might be near when it seems afar. So stick to the fight when your heart is hit. It's when things seem worse that you must not quit. Don't quit. Amen. Barnabas' name means son of encouragement. And you need encouragers around you on this journey. Amen. I guess this is time, Jerome, for, for apologies. And, you know, I was, we were, we were at the uh, birthday party last night, and, and there were two people who are near and dear to my heart who are on a special fast. Amen. And, and they, they were sharing with us, you know, what they were eating and, one put like four pecans in their plate and they seemed happy. <laughs> that, that That's what they were going to be eating. I, on the other hand, <laughs> had perused meatballs, wings, and other assorted delicacies <laughs> and whereas I should have been an encourager Ryan 
I was not. And so therefore, when I came in to worship today, I sought them out and I apologized to them because their pastor should have been an encourager. And I told them if I was a little stronger, I would probably be on it with them. But I haven't got there yet, Kim. Amen. Now I'm, I'm probably on the road to get there, so I ain't going to quit. Hallelujah. Just wanted y'all to know that. Amen. Uh, but you need encouragers along with you on this journey. Because sometimes it gets tough. Sometimes it gets tight. And if we're not careful, we will start to wander. Amen. But if you have some Barnabases around you who encourage you, amen. Some of y'all should know what I'm talking I should have got more than one amen. You know, there, there, there are some of you all who you claim you like working out, but, you know, you, you can go try to work out, and when you get there, you got your clothes on, you got the, your towel and everything, and, and it, it takes more sweating to open the door, and sometimes you don't even go in. That would fall under the category of good intentions. <laughs> Amen. But somebody told me that the way to hell is paid with good intentions. I'm just saying. So anyway, Barnabas said, I'm going to take John Mark with me. Now, if John Mark had quit, if he had thrown in the towel, he would not have been a part of the next missionary journey that he went on with Barnabas. And Barnabas just happened to be, according to scripture, his cousin. Amen. Who encouraged him that even though you messed up on the first journey, even though you didn't stick to it, I'm not going to give up on you. I'm going to take you with me. Amen. And Paul took a man by the name of Silas. And so Paul and Silas went on a second missionary journey, but John, Mark, and Barnabas went in a different direction. You see, when there is differences of opinion amongst Christians, you don't throw in the towel. You don't stop doing what is right. Amen. Sometimes you have to go in a different direction. But don't quit. Amen. You got to keep on keeping on. And so people tell me, they say, well, you know, I, I'm not too sure about persecution, but I, I, God uses persecution. Sometimes God uses difficulties because now, whereas you only had one team going out, now you got two. Which means that the word could go forward in a much stronger way. Why? Because opposition came. But when opposition comes, you can't quit. And you can't throw in the towel. This church would never have been birthed. Have we thrown in the towel? But because we kept going, now the gospel is going forward in a magnificent way. Yes. Yes. Amen? Amen? Now, I kept reading. So, Mira, I kept reading. And, and I found out that John Mark sailed off of Cyprus with his cousin Barnabas. And years later, Oh, my goodness. Paul calls John Mark a fellow worker. You'll find that in Philemon 124. So what happened? What happened between John Mark and Barnabas going in a different direction than Paul and Silas? Well, I'll tell you what happened. John Mark matured. John Mark grew in the faith. 
John Mark kept walking with the Lord. And sometimes you may not be what you're supposed to be, but you're a far cry from what you used to be. You can't quit. You got to keep on moving. Amen. People like to tell you, I, I remember when you, you were. Well, if somebody remember when you were. Don't get grand. Everybody got a pass. Everybody started in a bad place. But it's not how you start, it's how you finish. <laughs> Hallelujah. And so even though you've made mistakes, anybody in here made any mistakes? Yeah, you should have both hands up. And toes and everything, feet and everything ought to be up. Because everybody in here has made so many mistakes until we can't even count them. <laughs> and you know what I used to hear? John, I used to hear uh, people say, you know, God is a second chance God. If God is only a second chance God, we might as well go home. Amen. Because we used our second chance up probably when we was messing up in the first chance. But I found that, you know, Paul, Peter asked Jesus one time, he said, how often? Should I forgive my brother? And, and, and this is what he had. Russ, he said, should I do it seven times? Now, wait a minute. I, I know a little bit of hermeneutics. And the number seven is the number of completion. And, and so when Peter said to Jesus, if I do it seven times, am I okay? He thought he was on good ground. Jerome, he thought he was vindicated. But Jesus turned and said, no, you need to forgive 70 times seven. Now, if my multiplication is correct, that is 490 times in one day. And I don't believe that Jesus meant for you to count, well, this is one time. This is your second time. I'm up to 400 now. No, I, I think what Jesus was saying was we need to live in a perpetual state of forgiveness. Why should we live in a perpetual state of forgiveness? Because Jesus forgives us not just one time, but every time we go back to him and say, Lord, I'm sorry, he throws our sins in the sea of forgetfulness and remembers them no more. And stop telling people you got to pray on it. You mad. And somebody say, well, you, will you forgive me? Well, uh, I'm going to pray on it. What if God heard you say, Lord, forgive me, and the Lord said, you know, I, I'm feeling you, but I, I need to pray on that. See, what you need to do is make a decision to forgive and then let your feelings catch up with your decision. Yeah. And so later on, Paul calls John Mark a fellow worker because John Mark had evidently matured. He had grown up in the faith. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I thought as a child. I understood as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. Amen. And, and here's one of the things that I learned teaching fatherhood is that there's not an age where a, a boy becomes a man. Amen. Because you got... 60-year-old boys who have never developed into a man. And you're not a man just because you put pants on, because women put pants on too.
Oh, you know, when you come to true light, you're going to get it straight. Amen. You just, I mean, uh, so, you know, being a man is not, it, it's not because you have a dangling participle. When, a, when you're a man, you take care of man things. Amen. You, you, you understand that you don't throw in the towel when things don't go well with you. You don't quit just because things go south. Amen. But you stick to it. Amen. You take care of business because that's what men do. Amen. Praise God. Near the end of Paul's life, Paul sent a request to Timothy from a Roman prison. You will find this in 2 Timothy 4, verses 9 through 11. It says, do your best to come to me quickly. For Demas, because he loved this world, has deserted me and has gone to Thessalonica. Crescens has gone to Galatia and Titus to Dalmatia. Only Luke is with me. And then he says, get Mark and bring him with you because he is helpful to me in my ministry. We're talking about the, the guy, the young guy who ran from the crowd at the outset. We're talking about the one who quit on the missionaries when they were out and it got a little hot. But now that Paul, you all remember Paul. Paul said, the time of my departure is at hand. Paul said, I fought a good fight. I finished my course. I've kept the faith, and now is laid up for me treasures in heaven. But before he checks out, he writes and says, go get John Mark, because he is profitable to my ministry. Thank God for people who were runners yesterday, but have some stick to itness today. Thank God for people who didn't quit and throw in the towel just because it got tough. But stuck it out. Because weeping man do it for a night. But joy come in the morning. Somebody say, well, what is the darkest part of the night is midnight. And if you find yourself at midnight, hold on. And if you can't hold on, hang on. Because help is on the way. Hallelujah. And the last thing I have to tell you about John Mark is that you would not have the second gospel in the Bible if they had quit on John Mark and he had quit on God. But when you go to the New Testament, you hit Matthew but then you hit another book called Mark. And guess who the Holy Spirit used to write that book? It was the naked runner in Mark. It was the one who quit on Paul and Barnabas, who didn't quit, but stuck to it. And God used him mightily, and we're still being influenced and inspired by the writings of John Mark in the book. I wonder if there are any people in here who thought that they didn't have anything to offer, who thought that they were washed up because of past sins, who God still wants to use, who God still wants to develop, if you just allow him to. I know you've made mistakes. I have too. I know it hasn't always been easy, but God didn't promise that the road would be easy. But he did promise that he would never leave you nor forsake you. If you just hang out with him, he'll hang out with you. 
And somebody said, just a little talk with Jesus will make everything all right. And so I'm habitual in my talk with the Lord. As a matter of fact, when I call heaven, and I call him in the morning, and I found out that if you pay your bills, you can talk as long as you want to. And so when I call up heaven, I don't hang up. I just, see, some of y'all, you, you, remember, you remember when you was dating? When you thought you was in love? And, and sometimes you had run out of things to say. Your poems had gone out. You didn't run out. You didn't have anything else to say. So you just held the phone. And every now and then you'd say, are you still there? They'd say, yes, okay, <laughs> all right. Well, when you call God, don't hang up. And understand that just like you talk to him, he'll talk back to you. And the joy we share as we tarry there is like none other have known. And so that's your message for today. Fight the good fight of faith and never give up. Everybody on your feet. Everybody standing. Don't give up on God because he won't give up on you. He's able. And he's able to do exceedingly more abundantly than you can even imagine. The door is open. Maybe you're here this morning and you've heard this message and the message has spoken to you. Maybe you need the Lord in your life. You've never received the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal savior. If that's you, all you've got to do is just head for one of these doors. There's somebody standing there who will take you and get your information and let you know what you need to do. Amen. And it's not difficult. Amen. If you just have the faith, God's got the power. Maybe you don't have a church home and you need a church home. Every Christian needs in a, to be in a church. A Christian without a church is like a fish out of water. Amen. Maybe, maybe you quit, you threw in the towel, but you want to get back in the game. And the Lord is married to backsliders. The Lord loves you. He hasn't given up on you. He knows everything about you and he still loves you. Maybe you need to rededicate yourself. Maybe you need to recommit to the Lord this morning. This is your time. And then maybe you're here and you need to go to the cross. There are some things that you are carrying that are too big for you. But if you go to the cross and write it down and nail it to the cross, leave it there. The Lord will handle it for you. Amen. So wherever you are, this is your time. Won't you come? God is able to do just what he said he would do. He's gonna fulfill every promise.